We've got another big box here. <laughs> Starlink's new Enterprise dish designed to be fixed mounted uh, in a variety of applications and it's really optimized for mobile use is here. Come along with us. I'll tell you all about it. So who is this dish for? Well, I, I want to actually start with something kind of uniquely different that a lot of people don't know about. Most people don't even know that the Enterprise dish exists at all. Um, but at the at the time of filming of this $6.99 price point, it does it is an actually a very interesting product for um, mobile internet enthusiasts because you're getting a enterprise level dish that has higher performance specs than the standard Gen 3 dish, but you're not having to step all the way up to the high performance fixed mount dish. Now, the high performance fixed mount dish, which you've seen us cover in previous videos, I'll link to that. That's a $2,500 dish. It sometimes goes on sale for $1,500, depending on kind of what Starlink's flavor of the month is with their um, with their sales. But that comes with a wedge mount and largely the the components of that are very much identical to what you see here in the Enterprise, uh, but that dish has a larger field of view. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact uh, degrees. It's all in the listing and it's all covered in our other video, but um, it has a larger field of view and it's the dish that myself and Andy have on our rigs, the high performance dish, because the Enterprise didn't exist at that point. I can tell you from personal experience that the high performance dish does perform better under light tree cover and in adverse weather conditions like rain or other things. It, it has more power, it draws more power, um, and it has the ability to transmit and receive more effectively because it has effectively the equivalent of two of the old Gen 2 dishes in terms of surface area. So it's a much bigger dish. Now the Enterprise dish that you see here is kind of an in-between between the old Gen 2 and the high performance. So it's larger, um, but it's not as large as the high performance. Now here's something that's kind of an interesting uh, comparison. This is a standard Gen 3 um, dish that, you know, the consumer grade dish that you see pretty much everybody has if they bought their dish in the last year. And this is the Enterprise. They're identical. Uh, they look pretty much the same externally. Um, if you hold them up next to each other, they are literally the same dish. Um, so they, this can be confusing and it looks very much like it's the same dish. Uh, now under the hood, if you look over at the Starlink specifications and you kind of see how this all operates, this has a larger power supply that's going into it and this dish is operating, um, uh, utilizing a bit more power, but it's able to sustain higher performance numbers. Mainly, this just performs better um, to increase upload speeds and potentially can help with download speeds and can also help if you have any type of obstructional issues like moderate tree cover or rain or things like that. So the Enterprise dish is more expensive um, and you get different stuff with it than you do with the standard Gen 3 dish. Now the standard Gen 3 dish, the big, probably the biggest thing that is a differentiator besides the fact that the Enterprise has a high, more high, a higher performing dish with, with better specifications, is that the Gen 3 comes with a router. So it is a kind of out of the box, ready to go, done internet solution where that could just be your only solution. Um, for most of our customers though, they're realizing during travel, during sort of setting these up or taking them down, um, what I've known for years, which is that if you go out there and you travel, um, you're finding that with tree cover, with adverse weather conditions, with RVs being parked potentially close to you or kind of what's available in a lot of different areas, buildings, um, Starlink doesn't always connect. Um, when our friends at the Mobile Internet Resource Center did a, a trip kind of around the country, they actually statistically for members mapped out their entire trip and what they used for connectivity across the whole way. And it was pretty eye-opening. We found that the Starlink was absolutely awesome and it got us all out of a lot of pickles when we were traveling, but it was by far the hardest to set up and the device that worked in the fewest amount of locations compared to 5G or cellular technology. And again, that's mainly just because of the stuff that was around you. If you were you know, going out into a national park trip 
or if you were going to Canada or Mexico, I would not go without my Starlink. Absolutely not. Um, they are absolutely awesome. But for the average person just sort of driving around campgrounds and wanting to not have to selectively pick sites or not have shade or things like that, Starlink can be tricky. So what really is awesome about the Enterprise Dish and where it shines is it's designed to work with an external third-party router, like you see here, this is a PepLink uh, B1 5G uh, running RoamLink, which is our multi-carrier uh, solution that works on every single carrier. So the way that the Enterprise Dish is designed to optional or designed to work is it comes with this fixed mount, which we'll go into in a minute, and this would be mounted kind of installed up on your roof. Yes, you could technically, you know unplug it or disconnect it, but I think the Enterprise's real fit and finish is to put it up there and to not think about it. You run one cable down from this dish into this power supply. That's this big boy right here. And we'll talk about how you can get smaller cables. We have sourced these in all sorts of lengths so you don't have to deal with that massive cable. Or you can cut this. We have, uh, we have some guides on, on how to do that. Just note that, that will it's not returnable and that will avoid the warranty uh, on that cable, but it's very doable. And these cables are very easy to source. Uh, you run one cable down from this dish, you plug it into this power supply, and then you run this cable here into your, uh, your router. So in this case, it'd be a PepLink router. And what that type of solution does for you is it gives you the ability to have your Starlink. You can monitor this, your Starlink from the dashboard of this device. You can still continue to use the Starlink app, which will work um, as well, as long as the device is online. Um, and you can see, you know, various Starlink statistics and packet loss and everything like that. But you can also see it through InControl and through the PepLink admin dashboard. And with a device like this, you'd have a 5G connection and a Starlink connection. You could drag and drop those uh, connections. So you were using 5G if you were in an obstructed area, or you could say I'm using uh, Starlink if you're in a... Um, in an area without cellular coverage. You can kind of mix and match those. With a device like this, you can also combine them together. So now if you're in a situation where your Starlink's partially obstructed, maybe it's disconnecting a little bit every once in a while, your 5G and your Starlink can work together when the Starlink goes offline for a second. You don't lose any packets with the speed fusion technology if you configure it. All of your traffic can go over that bonded connection and it's completely seamless if one of those connections disconnects. For you remote workers, that's, that's the bee's knees. That's what you want. Because if something is sort of working a little bit and something else is sort of working a little bit by combining them together, those Zoom calls, those video calls, Teams calls just become a completely different home-like internet experience once you start to understand how that speed fusion technology works. So sorry to kind of go into that, but it's important to know that if you're looking at an enterprise or a fixed mount dish because they don't come with Wi-Fi or routers out of the box. What you're really paying for is a kit that's made and designed right out of the box to be able to plug in to a multi-WAN solution like a PepLink router to give you that uh, full customization and multi-WAN link experience. Going a little bit deeper into the mounting options that you have here, I'll just go ahead and pop open this box for the fixed mount. The Starlink has done a great job um, with their mounts um, that are included by really kind of using um, anodized aluminum that are, are weatherproof and just making a really nice mount with a fit and finish. You can buy this mount, by the way, separately from us on our store. Um, we've sourced the, the exact same mounts, so we have them, but the Starlink kit um, comes with the Enterprise kit. So what you're effectively, if you look at this mount kind of close up, you've got a nice little rubber boot seal there. Uh, it comes with this nice long screwdriver. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is actually a lock that can lock the dish up there so that it can't, I mean, it could technically be taken if someone else had a really long screwdriver like this, but it's sort of a mild theft deterrent there that will lock this into place and prevent it from being pulled off um, from, from the kit. You get some installation instructions and then a host of screws that come inside of this kit along with some rubber backed uh, stainless washers um, that you see there, they're kind of rubber on both sides. And the idea there is that between this rubber seal here, if you clean your roof off, you can press that down and then you can install either with the included nut and bolt system uh, that could allow you to, to bolt this basically to something or with the self-tapping uh, lag bolts that you have here. And then your, your waterproof washer would come up through there, down through here, excuse me, 
down through that hole right there, as you can see there, then you'd have waterproof on the top and the bottom. You could screw this down. Now, I personally would not do that type of installation unless I was on like a metal roof of like a transit vehicle or something that was perfectly flat and I knew that those seals were going to have excellent contact. If I wasn't, I would go ahead and um, I would use those that connection there, but I would use Dicor or another kind of waterproofing sealant here if I was going into a um, TPO roof or a fiberglass roof or um, pretty much any RV roof surface, I would definitely go with a, um, a sealant that was recommended by the manufacturer for that particular roof type to aid in uh, sealing because um, some roofs have textures on them like TPO roofs and a rubber to that seal's not gonna to keep water out completely in my opinion. But very easy to use die core or other things that are available at Mobile Must Have to make sure that this is a fully waterproof solution. If the surface mount's not your flavor, uh, we have quite a few mounts. We've got roof mounts, we've got uh, pole mounts, uh, just about any mount you can think of for a particular installation, a really cool roof rack mount, um, all sorts of different options. And um, this is compatible with um, our, our carbon um, fiberglass mast, our telescoping mast, that also works on most ladders as well. It's an ultra light uh, uh, mount that can go on the back of the ladder. And it's the lightest pull out there on the market and it can handle the weight of the Starlink Enterprise and the Gen 3. In initial testing, I have, I have seen that the performance improvements of the Enterprise, in my opinion, if you're gonna go through the hassle of bolting this up on the roof and having Starlink as one of your, your options, um, I personally think that the you know few extra dollars at six ninety nine versus whatever the sale price is on the consumer dish is is worth the investment on the dish, especially because it's going to be up there, and you know having that added performance in light tree cover um, is going to make a difference. So I'd recommend definitely looking at the Enterprise if you're looking for a fixed mount installation. The Enterprise dish does differ slightly from the standard Gen three, and it's mainly to do with this power supply with higher higher power output and um, the cable that's included with it. So the standard Gen 3 will come with a ethernet cable that basically has this waterproof ethernet end on both ends. The enterprise dish that you see here is gonna have one end that has that ethernet waterproof end that goes up to the dish and the other end is the proprietary Starlink uh, end that goes into this power supply. It sort of looks like a, um, like a USB-C cable that's got a little bit of a an adjustment to it. It is actually a USB-C uh, cable that they customized, but uh, separate or termination point that they customized. But so there is some differences here. Now this kit is designed to work out of the box with this power supply and operate with 120 volt power. So if you have an inverter in your system, you're looking at a, um, a yacht installation or a boat installation where you've got Victron or something else on board that's giving you that 120 volt power, you could be pretty much good to go right out of the box with this power supply. It's a IP66, as I said, rated water, you know, resistant quite a bit power supply. And it also comes with this nice handy wall mount here. Um, so it does help with kind of aiding in your installation of your, of your wiring cabinet. Um, this works out quite well. Now, uh, again, you need 120 volt power. If you're interested in running this kit on uh, DC power and you want to run it off your house batteries, uh, this is a, a, a DC converter that we've come out with at mobilemusthave.com. This works with all of the Starlink current dishes. You may need an adapter depending on the cables, but uh, you won't... Um, you won't need any, well, I'll tell you what you need right now for this dish. But um, what this does is this allows you to run on 12 or 24 volt house batteries. You plug your power right up to these. We have a separate video that goes deep dive into how to wire this up. Um, and then it gives you power over ethernet at the correct voltage to power the Starlink dish. And then a LAN port that goes over to your Peplink or other external router. And this is nice because you can run it on 12 volts and it also gives you a power button. Uh, so you can turn on and off the device and it gives you 12 volt output here and we have an, uh, an optional cable that you can pick up on this USB-A port that 12 volt, don't plug something USB like a phone into that. Uh, you can use this USB-C port for that, that's five volt, they're all labeled. But that 12 volt port you can actually plug in and it will power up a Peplink router and we have a, a cable that will go to the Molex. So in your installation you can have one set of wires going up 
from your 12 volt or 24 volt battery bank and then out to your Starlink to power that and out to your PepLink to power that without a bunch of messy wires everywhere. Now, if you're paying attention on this big wire, I mentioned that the other end of this big wire is not standard ethernet. It's designed to work with this big power supply. So if you do want to use a DC kit like this, you'll just need to pick up a optional cable that has the ethernet on both ends. And we sell those cables. And quite frankly, most or some people, uh, I don't know about most, but anyone who's not using the included power supply, this may be just a bit too much cable for them. Uh, so you can pick up a 10 foot cable or a 30 foot cable or a 75 foot cable from us with the two ethernet cable ends with the waterproofing on it. And then you'd go from the enterprise dish straight uh, with that, up, that new cable right into the PoE port here and you'd be done. That would be it. You wouldn't have to use this big uh, power supply or anything. Um, this is like four pounds. This is 13 ounces. So it's a fairly different amount of weight if you're doing van life or something else where you've got to consolidate your space. Uh, this could be a really good option. Just note that you've got to make a modification to this cable or replace it. It's not particularly hard also to just cut this end off and re-terminate this. Uh, you're just gonna need um, CAT 6A or CAT 7 uh, termination crimps with, uh, with ends just because that cable's quite thick. Um, I might even buy CAT 8 because of the size of this just so I can make sure to fit it in there. Um, and those are available uh, on Amazon and all over if you wanna terminate uh, your own cables. And we can help you with the, uh, the wire colors if necessary, but it, if you're not comfortable with that or you have to go out and buy all the tools, honestly, it's gonna be cheaper to just replace that cable. Our cables are not that expensive if you wanna go with a DC um, power option for the Enterprise dish. That pretty much does it for just a quick overview on the Starlink Enterprise dish that comes with the vehicle uh, mobility mount uh, in our kit. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at info at mobilemusthave.com or you can start up a chat in the bottom right hand corner um, of our site. You can also give us a call. Our phone number is in the top left of the site, or you can schedule a consultation with an expert if you're kind of trying to put together a kit and you want to know exactly what you need by going to talk.mobilemusthave.com and scheduling a mutually agreed time there where you can talk to an expert and kind of go over all of the various options. Starlink Enterprise is for me, um, an absolutely awesome um, add-on to my existing kit. I do tend to use the 5G uh, about 90% of the time. It's faster and it consumes less power and it works under tree cover. Uh, and with Roamlink, it's multi-carrier, but I won't travel without my Starlink. This is really kind of my backup uh, solution. Uh, a lot of people have it the other way around where they use Starlink as their primary. I just find that with a limited access to sky when I'm in a moving vehicle. Flipping that order around gets you better, better results. But to each his own, doesn't really matter. The beautiful part about those PepLink uh, mobile routers is you can configure them in any, any way you want with whatever you want to be primary or secondary. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you on the road.